Well, that plan was aborted very quickly. As we approached it, the swell picked up from one meter to something like three meters. Everything I say is a load of old tea. It's early mornings, half past six. Great noises coming from the village, little tapping noises, vague sounds of people, lovely bird sound. Don't know if you can pick any of this up. Uh, we're gonna go ashore, we're gonna go and uh, say hello to the people in the village a bit later when the sun's up and it's a bit more of a reasonable time. We've just seen two boats go past full of schoolgirls. They've all got white veils over black and they all were smiling and waving, but we didn't have a chance to get the camera for that, but uh, so peaceful and lovely here. So we've just, um, we've just poked our noses into the creek and we've got mangroves either side, which is great. Looks like there's a little bit of um, coral, the ridge you go over. Um, it's beautiful, very beautiful. And these great big boulders, these granite boulders that roll right down into the ocean. Just, um, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a contrived country garden that you'd get in England, trying to make it tropical. And this is the real thing. Here it is, all in front of me. I'm gonna go into the village now. has found a friend already. Cheerful little thing. Oh. So, wind's picked up. Anyway, we've just tied up the dinghy to the little concrete jetty here. And uh, our man here has taken the line for us very kindly. First thing we meet is a cat. We're just gonna go ashore. Now, I don't think it's gonna be particularly busy because I think a lot of the children have gone off to school. Some have gone to school on other islands, uh, but I think there's a school here and I think I heard them earlier in the school. So it could be interesting to go and check it out. Um, but of course, as the sun comes up, so people sort of tend to hide away and stay inside, but it's still quite cool with this breeze at the moment. A group of uh, school children here. I wonder how quickly we can scare them off. There we go. That didn't take long, did it? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Apakaba. What is your name? Hi. No. That looks nice. Is this a uh, school? Yeah. A, a scholar? Yeah. Can we look? Can we come in? Camera. Yeah. Camera. <laughs> Hi. Are you a teacher? Are you a teacher? Yes. Teacher. My name is Liz. 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 I'm here. Hello. Hi. Hello. All the teachers. Wow. Yeah, teachers. Many teachers. Yeah. How many? Uh, how many? Ten. Ten teachers. Ten teachers. And how many children? Boys and girls. Yeah. What do you come from? We come from England. <laughs> um, yeah. On the Prahu. Prahu. What are we doing this? Well, the ubiquitous selfie, wherever we go. And selfie? Together? Yeah. Together. Cinema! 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 What do you mean? Met the long man? Cinema! 
What have you just learned? I've learned that coconut, which is the English word for coconut, in Indonesian is kalapa, which is what we knew. But Anambas has its own dialect and they call them neo. So that is a neo while we're here. I think we're going to get some, aren't we? I hope so, I really hope so. I'd love to. Yeah. <laughs> I like one of these, these little icy treats she's got here. <laughs> <laughs> so we asked the question, what is the name of this town, using fabulous Google Translate, which is Apa Nama Kota Ini. <laughs> and the name of this town is Noko. Noko. This is Noko. Which is not, it's not named anywhere at all that we've found. No, we haven't seen it on any, on any, any maps anywhere. So we now know the name. It's, it's not really a town, I'd say it's a village, it's quite small. When we took the hook yesterday afternoon, uh, someone sent me via Bluetooth two photographs. And uh, it's of two lovely ladies. Here they are. And um, yeah, they just received these pictures sent to us by the phone. No idea who they are. Anyway, we've just asked the ladies here and they have identified one of the young ladies in this picture. She comes from this island and she lives down here, somewhere down here. So we need to see if we can find her and say hello. To her, she's lovely, isn't she? <laughs> Hi. So there we go, that was a bit of fun. That was a local school of the village of Nokok. And what we learned today is that uh, in Anambas they have their own local dialect. So a kalapa is not a kalapa, but it is a nul and um, that's the thing. Kazakh, which means tasty, very good for food, is sotop. So there's a few words that we need to learn and we are learning one at a time. Bye-bye. <laughs> My name is... What's your name? My name is Elga. Elga. Elga, good name, strong name. <laughs> Well, it can only be, what, nine, nine o'clock, I think, and it's already, Ten. sorry? Ten, Ten o'clock, oh, there we go. I thought it was starting to get rather warm. You can see there's a road here, which they haven't quite finished building yet. Very similar to Ayaputri, where we went a couple of years ago. Uh, they're clearly getting some money for investing their basic infrastructure here. Uh, but they haven't quite finished the middle bit. So we just got to the end of the line, just walking down this concrete pathway here. Uh, very typical of these Anambas villages. And they're extending it a little bit. They've put out some wooden platforms and someone is building a new house. I don't know how the current previous end of the line house is going to feel about that since they have an outside toilet. <laughs> since arriving in this part, in these islands the last week or so, we've heard a lot of trees being sawn and chopped down and a lot of timber work going on and now we can see why because they're building this walkway here in the house and behind me there's a whole load of timber that's been cut all lined up ready to go and just behind Jamie there's some logs that are ready to be cut into nice two befores. some stupid reason as it gets hotter we've taken a concrete path out of the village and up a hill thinking it was just going to end in the middle of nowhere but we've just passed three ladies who appear to be one with a machete one with carrying some washing I'm not sure but uh, we've just got to the top of the hill 
There's a big clearing here, non-specific, and then it, oh, and then it goes back down the other side, oh, presumably to the next village on the other side of the bay. Is there one? Who knows? I just thought we were coming to the village. I didn't bring any water. Didn't buy any in the village. So for me, this is enough. I don't want to walk all the way down and walk all the way back up again and not have a drink of water because I'm parched. I'll wait here for you. I think at this point we put the drone up. <laughs> Come on, let's pull it then. No, I help. Come on, Mama. Let's do it. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's heavy. I just dragged that thing for a good 500 meters or so. It's like a Roman torture, dragging a whole bunch of uh, heavy branches with a nylon rope in this heat. And she probably does this every day yeah. as well. So we've got it over the, the easy bit. She's now got the difficult bit. And there's three men sitting there in the shade, nattering, just watching her. No one's helping her. And yet, she was laughing the whole way. Great big grin. Funny. God, I need water. All right. <laughs> okay, back to the boat. Uh, Lizzie's uh, doing the honors with the engine today. Getting in some practice. so much for our plans to go and visit the other village and check out the rocks and the reefs over there today it ain't gonna happen because it has been pissing with rain uh, last night we had huge lightning storms and a big squalls come through from the coast of Malaysia all the way across the south part of the South China Sea and to top it all off you can't see it through here and it's too wet to go outside but that is a big FAD one of those fish floating device things which they tow on the let me, let me get outside, let me see if I can get a shot. Excuse me, young lady, I need to get through. This thing, you can imagine, at three in the morning or whenever it was, the sky lit up and um, there was a big loud as this thing was towed into the anchorage. Came right across the front and of course at night time I couldn't really see what was going on. All I could see was this thing tied up very close to us. It doesn't look like it here. I mean, he's safe enough, he's far enough away. Of course, we were swinging around in the wind and I was a bit worried that uh, we might uh, run into him. But it's all good. Terrible weather though. It's horrible. So after the rain, the storm last night, we've still got rain this morning. Uh, we've decided to, we might as well go somewhere. So we're just going across the bay. Uh, we'll find somewhere that's nice and sheltered. Probably hunker down for the day because it looks like we're going to have this cloud cover pretty much all of the day. Obviously we're motoring, there's no, there's not any kind of wind really and we're not going very far but also it gives us a chance to charge the batteries while we're motoring along. Yeah, we're just going to scope this area out and see if we can find somewhere we're comfortable with.
been a non day today, what with the weather. Liz, checking her email because we're trying to book in into a marina somewhere in Borneo. We're actually having a game of rummy cub for old times' sake. Mills, surprisingly, has been up on deck all day, which is quite unlike her. But then she spent most of the night on night watch with me in the storm. We had one of these guys parked up. And then this guy and his little uh, boat decided to pull in another one. It looks like this. I can't quite work out what they're doing. I don't know if they're swapping over or what, but uh, as long as they stay over there, I don't mind. But I think he is now being towed out. That was the original one that was anchored here. I don't know. I can't quite work it out. We've, we've had a few people visit us today as well, passing boats. A couple of guys asking for beer, which of course we don't have on board at all. There you go, careful manoeuvring by our man here. He's done a U-turn and he's turning these boys out. So I guess it's their turn. This is obviously the blue team. These two FADs or whatever you want to call them, painted in blue. Uh, there's another one going out on our port side as well. A little garden shed in the middle there. It's probably got a great big huge sound system. While at the front of Esper up there there were three of these anchored up here and uh, this guy's now taken out one of them. Doesn't look quite so smart when it's not painted blue but you can imagine it's all very well when they go out at dusk. When these guys turn up like the one did last night at 2.30 in the morning all the lights on these constructions are they're massive arc lights. They're powered by at least one if not two generators. And uh, you can imagine when they come into a tight anchorage, you've got the sound of the uh, boat chugging away and then you've got these arc lights lighting up the whole anchorage. And uh, when there's a storm brewing as well on the horizon, it's all a bit frisky and we're running around the deck, not quite freaking out, but these guys kind of know what they're doing anyway. But it's quite a sight to see. Well, that plan was aborted very quickly and um, as we approach that channel I put an overlay on the screen so you can see how tight it is. As we approached it the swell picked up from one meter to something like three meters. There uh, seemed to be some overfalls between the little island and the channel and the bigger islands um, and it got really hairy and the problem is, is that because that entrance is very narrow those breaking waves were going into that channel and all the way up the channel Meanwhile, we had a fishing guy uh, who was sort of playing chicken with us and um, it all got a bit confusing and rather hairy and I'm not in the mood for that kind of stuff. So we've turned around, stuck the engine on and we're just motoring up around the corner to get back out of this swell into something more respectable like a one meter swell. So that there's Pedjul, uh, we visited this place two years ago and there was uh, this thing being built on the hill. It was incomplete then and it doesn't look like much has changed since then. So uh, this is where we met the rather simple woman who had a turtle tied up as a pet. Very odd. And you can just see just through there the turquoise waters. 
Um, we're not going to go there again because we did that last time. We got some great drone footage and also some uh, just some great views from the top of that hill there. But we're going to go behind this island and out the way of this wind and swell. Honest, looking at this place on the chart when we had 22 to 25 gusting to 28 when some of the catapatics came down you'd have thought no way no way can you possibly anchor there and get any kind of protection but it was like um, a line drawn across the water as we came here um, and literally I think just a couple of hundred meters from the shore that swell completely stops, all the waves stop. Yes, yeah, sure, we are getting wind through, but we have got quite a lot of wind at the moment. Don't mind the wind. It's those big waves when you're at anchor that we don't like. Um, and this was just too pretty, too pretty to pass up. So we're going to anchor here today and tonight, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. Well, you might be able to hear in the background the amount of wind that's blowing. Uh, Liz is just putting the snubber on so I should be on the helm but incredible amount of catabatics good 25 gusting 25 knots off these mountains here all the way across just with the mizzen and the stay sail we were doing five knots really really strong winds and there just didn't seem to be anywhere to anchor until we got to this spot which we've not been to before this is called Sandspit Island and one of the annotations actually says surprisingly protected considering its position and I have to say they are spot on because as you come into this little bay suddenly the swell drops we've still got catabatics but the swell has dropped and um, we're only in 11 meters or so 12 meters so uh, I think we're gonna stick it out here some great views and of course for those catabatics it'll be nice and cool at night as well this this is the radio I use to talk to Jamie when I'm at the front and the wind's really bad. Low voltage. And it's decided that everything I say is a load of old tits. <laughs> Listen. Low voltage. Load of old tits. Which uh, was a little bit off-putting when I was trying to put the snubber on the anchor. <laughs> and you said to me, it's no, it's low saying... Low voltage. Low voltage. Not load of old tits. 